joy. What a moment to come to you live from Liberty Christian Center, Plainsville, a place where everybody is somebody and Jesus Christ is Lord. Welcome to our teen service. This is teacher Fannis. To our beloved children who have been away at school, we want to take this time to welcome you back. We thank God for keeping you in school and helping you to go through your studies. Some of you sat for exams, and by the grace of God, I can only think of a singer who sang and said, God of miracles, you have won my battles for me. So as we start off again to have our sessions, I want you to have that at the back of your minds. Welcome so, so, so much. We continue entrusting you in the hands of God for protection and sustenance. To all our highly valued viewers, welcome. It is indeed an honor and joy to have you in this online service. Praise be to Jesus. I would want us to just close our eyes and pray. Since morning, this song has been in my heart. And I won't mind if you join me in singing it. Maybe you could just hum. I'll not even sing for so long. It says, God of miracles, God of wonder, you've won my battle for me. God of miracles, you've won my battle for me. I am a winner man, I am a winner man, you've won my battle for me. I am a winner man, I am a winner man, you've won my battle for me. God of miracles, you've won my battle for me. God of miracles, you've won my battle for me. I am a winner girl, I am a winner boy, you've won my battle for me. I am a winner mother, I am a winner man, you've won my battle for me. Father, in Jesus' name, this is the confession of our hearts as we have this wonderful moment to be in your presence. Just to listen to your word, oh God. In these seasons where things look like we cannot predict what tomorrow holds for us. But because you live, the Bible says, because you live, we confess tomorrow. I commit myself to you, Lord, as we start this service. I commit our children to you. The teens, oh God, Father, you've been with them. You saw them in their mother's wombs. You saw them when they were being given birth to God. You have walked with them all through up to this moment. Thank you for keeping them in school. Thank you for those who enabled to sit for their, their class eight exams, oh God. Thank you for those who had to go through their studies, the form ones, form twos, form threes, and form fours who are even sitting for exams. And our children all over the Kenya and all over the world, Lord, we continue surrendering and entrusting them to you. As I share with them your word, what you've released into my spirit, give me the grace, Lord, to be so simple and clear and quicken their hearts to understand. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen and amen. Now the title of the message I'm going to share with us today I hope you are seated comfortably in the sitting room wherever you are. Your heart is set to receive from God, not from teacher Fannies. I'm only but a vessel. But I want to assure you there is something good in store for you. This God loves you. This God values you. This God cares for you. Now, the message I'm going to share uh, this morning, it's to do with uh, uh, divine response in crisis. Divine response in crisis or uh, acting on divine instructions when you are in a crisis. We are living at a time where it seems like we are in a little bit of uh, crisis. There could be economical crisis, it could be social crisis, it could be spiritual crisis. You know, you feel like things are not just working out. For example, we are not supposed to be having Form 4 students sitting for the exams right now, but because of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, things have seemed to change around. And time and again, you find changes taking place. So the Lord dropped this in my spirit. As a child of God, as a, uh, a person who belongs to God, how am I supposed to respond? How are you as young people supposed to respond to crises 
what are these challenges? And to, uh, to start off my introduction, I would just want to make a few remarks. I would want to say this, life is like a journey whose pathway is characterized with uh, different types of terrains. Uh, you may find sometimes you are in a plane, and sometimes it's like you are climbing a mountain, it requires a lot of energy. And now on the top of the mountain, you feel like, wow, I have reached, all things are working well. People can see me, I'm fine, all is well. And sometimes on the valley, in the valley, it's like, oh God, things are not good. Like right now, it could be like, we are in a valley, some, kind, so, some sort of a valley. Sometimes you could also find in a plane, a plane, it's like a flat environment. You keep on walking and not much changes are taking place. Some kind of constants. It's like you needed to be in form two and it's, you're still in form one. You're supposed to be in form three and you are in form two and you wonder what's happening to me. Some kind of a constant factor. It's only Jesus is a constant, you cannot be a constant. Sometimes the terrain is so slippery, the pathway is slippery, it's so winding, it, 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 it's um, uh, rough, it's smooth, and you wonder, how do I handle this? I would want us to, to really be cautious of all these things, because in life, we have life goals. As teenagers, there are things you are looking up to. You are looking up to uh, completing your studies, you're looking up to having a wonderful career. You're looking up to having a fa good family life in the future. So that is the path you're supposed to. You are to walk through that path of coming up as a good parent, of succeeding as a career person, of succeeding in your studies. And you realize what well, there are challenges, there are valleys, there, there are mountains. How do I go about this? And in most cases, we never know what will befall us. And this is true with James chapter 4, verse 13 uh, to 15, which says, Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry a business, and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. That's a question to ask. It's good to have plans. It's good to look forward to a good career. You clear your form four. You go to the university. You have a job. Then you trust God for a family. There you are, a successful eh? a social life, a very uh, pleasing family life. You know, a company that you look at and you feel like, wow, things are fine. But it's like along the way, things are not working hard. We can relate actually to the children of Israel. It's like the Lord called them out of bondage and released them to a land flowing with milk and honey. But we want to see, was it smooth throughout for them? Was it easy throughout for them? I know you are familiar with this story. As we go through these COVID-19 situations and changes, you are familiar with that. And that's going to form our key as text as we go through this lesson. So continue reading James because God knows everything. The Bible says he's omnipotent, he's omnipresent, he's omniscient. He's everywhere. He knows everything. He knows your future life. He knew we could be in this season of COVID-19 and we can only relate well or move well through it, uh, uh, it, through it by trusting in him. So James is cautioning us. James is saying here, why do you, uh, why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. I think that my sister, you don't know. My brother, Jen there, um, David, you don't know what will happen tomorrow. And then he says, he goes on to say, what is your life? He asks a question. What is your life? Now you are at home, what is your life? Maybe you're sitting for this exam, what is your life? Maybe you lost your father, you lost your mother, you lost her guardian. It's like it has been so slippery for you. It has been so windy for you. It has been so threatening. It's like you are dealing with a crisis and you're asking yourself, what is my life all about? What does it say? It says your life is like a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. So instead you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that tomorrow. Proverbs 16 verse 9 echoes the same, same thing. And therefore, this causes a reminder to us or warns us to be very cautious that let us have life goals, good ones. But in all things, these things, let us commit them to God. Now, a question comes to us with all this surrounding us as teenagers, you know, whatever you are feeling, I may not feel it. Similarly, whatever I'm feeling, you may not feel it. Confronted with COVID-19, maybe you have an underlying issue. 
Maybe you are sickle cell anemia. Maybe you are diabetic. Maybe this, you are hypertensive or you've lost parents. Things are not fine. And you're wondering what next? And you are born again. You have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have invited him into your life. And I'm sure you may have been crying and calling on God. God, see what is happening to my father. See what is happening to my mother. Now I cannot get fees. Now we cannot pay rent because my parents are not at job. Their job is no, no longer there. Their business is not doing well. Therefore, you could ask, I would ask you this question. What would you do or how would you react or respond when events are not turning out to your best? Or when you are facing an impending danger, how would you react? Right now, how are you reacting to this situation? As a teenager, you may be here at home, maybe out of school for a given period of time. We don't know how we'll have to stay at home again. You're wondering, when will I finish my school from four? When will I finish university? When will I start my career? Number B, you could, I could also ask you, how about acting or responding to a divine instruction? that would de de determine the safety of your life and the safety of your surrounding, the safety of your generation, the safety of your people. How? Because this is the question we need to ask ourselves. We are in this kind of a situation. But as a child of God, how am I supposed to react? How should I respond? What does tomorrow hold for me? Should I just sit there and be there, not doing anything? Let us learn from the children of Israel, reading in the book of Exodus chapter 14 from verse 13. That was the introduction. I'll trust God to help me to move, move very fast and just release what he has put in my spirit for us, for you and even for us as your parents. The, um, the children of Israel were a nation that belonged to God. They, I, their identity was God. When they were in Egypt, they were in bondage and under what they were going through, they cried. They were crying and crying and crying. So this one should remind us, God is seeing the way we are crying and wondering what does, does tomorrow hold for us. And we've been praying and praying and praying. And I want to assure you, God has heard our prayers and he had, has answered. Don't be worried. Then God now calls the children of Israel out of this. He sends Moses. This is in Exodus at the Red Sea, I want to us look at character number one is Moses. We shall also look a bit at Noah, and then we shall finalize with Stephen. So number one, Moses and the Israelites at the Red Sea. This is in Exodus 14, verse 9 to 11. We shall also refer to, uh, refer to Exodus 14, verse 13 to 17. And then Exodus, the same uh, 14, verse 21 to 22, then 26 to 28. I hope you are putting them down. I hope you have your pen and your, your book and you are settled and you're not making noise and you're not moving up and down. Please let us respect God. Make that sitting room or that bedroom, wherever you are seated, to be at the temple of God. Make it to be an environment which is conducive for the Spirit of God to come and minister to you, even as I share this message with us. So I would say our life can be related to the life of the Israelites. When they were called out of bondage, God sent Moses to get them out of that situation to freedom to, you know, to a good life. The Bible says a land flowing with honey and milk. But how was their journey? Was it smooth throughout? I doubt. I don't think it was so smooth throughout. When we look at Exodus chapter 14, we can see the Bible says from verse 5, Now it was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled, and the, the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this that we have led Israel to go from serving us? I will not continue. I just want to come up to that. Now you can ask yourself, after saying that, what did they do? The Bible says they decided to pursue after the Israelites to have them restored back into bondage. We have been born from our mother's womb. We cannot go back to our mother's womb. We are now born again. We have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We cannot go back into darkness because of what you are passing through. So we can see the Israelites are being pursued by Egyptians. And they come at the Red Sea. What does the Bible say? When the Israelites saw these people running out of them, the Bible says they complained, they murmured, and they questioned Moses, why have you gotten us out? 
weren't there graves in Egypt for us to die? And maybe you are asking yourself, why was I born? Why am I living this kind of a situation? Now my father has died. Now my guardians are not there. Now my mother has lost her job. Now we have been chased out of our house. Now there is a lockdown. Now there's no freedom for playing around and connecting with your friends. What next? Should I go back to my mother's womb? Should I just sin against God and forget about him? No. So when they were complaining like this, verse 14, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, this Moses was listening to what they were saying. And as Moses listened to these complaints, because it was a crisis, they have been brought by God, they are in the wilderness, it's in the middle of their life, you are in form two, you are maybe in form four, and you're wondering, what next, what? What will become out of me, what? Me of all people, what? And then now, it's like you want to complain. Your response, divine response in a crisis. What did Moses say? That is response number one I want us to learn from. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. In a crisis, divine response does not require fear. You must be strong. So our teenagers, the people of God, the children of God, like David when he was taking care of the father's sheep, like Samuel when he was living uh, uh, with, with him early in the temple, don't ever be afraid of any situation that you may find yourself through as a child of God who is born again in these last days. So Moses told them, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for for you today for the Egyptians whom you see today you shall see again no more forever the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace so when you are in a crisis you must maintain your identity in God your relationship with God should not be swayed your communication lines with God should be opened. This was Moses who was leading these people who is speaking this. And I want to ask myself, are those the words God has said? No, God had not yet spoken to him. But when Moses spoke those words, the Lord really backed those words. Let us see verse 15, what does it say? And the Lord said to Moses, you see, so learn to confess victory in whatever situation you are passing through. Confess victory. You've been born again. The Lord has convicted you, called you to himself. You have a great future in Christ Jesus. It does not matter the surrounding situations. When he has begun something with you, he is committed to it to bring it to an end. And that's why he tells us he is the author and the perfecter of our faith. So our walk with him, we may go through valleys, we may have mountains, we may have rough terrains, we may have smooth ones, but in all these things, we must retain our identity and our position in the body of Jesus Christ as children of God, and we must speak correctly. We must engage ourselves with activities which will cause God to speak a word of deliverance, which will cause God to intervene and give us victory in that situation. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. I know you are saying hallelujah. And I say praise the Lord. Say amen in your house, even if you are alone. Say amen. Shout because that is how you transform your atmosphere. Don't be gloomy in the presence of God. Don't think by saying, now you took away my father. Now you have caused my parents to lose our job. Now we have been informed two for two times, three times. When you complain and murmur, you chase away the presence, the divine presence of God to assist you. And that is not a divine response in crisis. A divine Divine response should be something close to praise. You praise the Lord. You thank him. You confess victory in the name of Jesus Christ. So verse 15 says, and the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? The Lord is asking me, why are you crying in that kind of a situation? Why are you complaining? Now I'm going to take two years in form two. Now I don't have even enough pocket money. No, don't complain. Tell the children of Israel to go forward. The Lord does not want you to remain stuck stagnant in any situation, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall, shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. A divine response in the midst of crisis. Where does it come from? It comes from the position God has given to you. In this case, Moses was a leader. 
your position as a mother, your position as a father, your position as a teenage girl, born again full of the Holy Ghost, your position as a teenage young man who has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you have remained in that part of the body. If you are a, a cell, you are in that specific location. If you are a tissue, you are in that specific place. If you are an organ like the heart, you are pumping even though weak and wondering, but you don't stop pumping, you continue pumping, poop, 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 even if it's very difficult, you continue pumping for life to continue, continue. And when the Lord says you are positive that you will actually go through these studies, you are positive you'll go through COVID-19 even though you are having sickle cell anemia, you are diabetic, then the Lord sees the faith, then he comes into the situation and he lifts you and grants you victory. The message is divine response in the midst of a crisis. You are supposed to stand still. Stillness does not mean complaining. Stillness does not mean murmuring. Stillness does not mean playing around and joking and indulging yourself in things which cannot actually attract the presence of God because there are certain situations you cannot go over them by yourself. They could not cross the Red Sea on their own. They could not for sure. And that's why it's good for you. Like if you're a firstborn, I usually keep on challenging my daughter. As a firstborn in this family, you need to study the situation, the environment. See what God is doing in our lives or see whatever is happening to us and step in. When I've been defeated to pray, pray with me. Do what you're supposed to do. Do what is right like David. It's now warfare. When David went to the battlefield, he did not go there to join them in complaining and trembling and wondering, oh, what is this all about? No, he listened to what was happening and had to give a divine response and ask, who is this who is defying hmm? the army of the Lord? And right now, our children, you can be the people God can use to grant us victory. You ask, what is this COVID-19 that is causing us to stay in our houses with our parents and we cannot progress? I want to move on to the next person that I would want us to learn from. And this is Noah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I hope you are getting blessed. Personally, I am getting blessed. And I am so much charged in my inner man. I'm telling the devil I am in the opposition. As far as kingdom matters are concerned, I am in the opposition. I'll never be on your side. And you will not threaten me. You will not discourage me. You will not make me to sit down. I will not look at my morphology, my conditions. No, 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 no. Because he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. He who is in you is greater than all your surrounding challenges. It could be the Red Sea. It could be COVID-19. It could be a particular kind of sickness. It could be poverty, whatever it is. A time comes when the Lord gives you a breakthrough, when you respond correctly to his intervention. I want us to come to the story of Noah. So that was Moses out of slavery to Canaan. But along the way, there is a challenge. There is a crisis. They cannot go through, the, through it by themselves. But then Moses responds correctly and God intervenes. Now, we are also living in days, the Bible says in the book of Colossians, 2 Timothy chapter 3, you read on your own. 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 3 says, In the last days there shall be perilous moments. Men will be, be lovers of themselves, full of you know, wickedness and not lovers of God. We are seeing that today. We are seeing it. They'll encourage things like homosexuality. They are pervasive. They are corrupt. Uh, some, even, some of them could be our parents, would want to loot money. There are allegations for COVID-19 money. We don't know the truth about it. But these things are happening. Our children, they are happening. And sometimes we may be lead, messing you up. We are disgracing the name of the Lord. And you are seeing this. How can you respond so that you help us not to bring a curse to you? But somehow you intervene. Instead of a curse, it can be turned into a blessing. So the Bible talks of one man, Noah. And I want to give the account of this Noah. And as I give this account of this Noah, you can also put your name there. The Bible says in Genesis 6, verse 9 to 17, this is the account of Noah. 
This is the account of Fannis. This is the account of Victor and his family and his siblings and his church and his village and his nation and his school. This is the account of this man. This is the account of Eli. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons. Now, when you are putting your name there, and the Bible is talking about sons, brother Eli, there at home, as you're looking at me, there at home. You know you may not be having sons at now, but there is something that comes out of you. You always produce something, the product of your life. The product of your life. The Bible says, Noah had how many sons? Three sons. You could ask yourself, ever since I was born up to now, what have I been producing in my life? Am I this kind of a student, child who is very rebellious, unruly, disobedient? When we say wash your hands, it's COVID-19, you cannot... When you say wear a mask, you cannot. You don't want to agree with the students, the, the lecturers. You cannot do your work. You don't do your assignments. You are not working. But the Bible says, Noah was a righteous man. So again, as people of God, the Lord should have a good testimony of us. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. As people of God, as people who are born again, let me just continue and read it a bit. Even if I not make many, many other references. What does it tell me? Verse 11, now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. Do we see violence today? We have seen whereby a child, uh, someone killed the, the parents. The whole family, there is violence. That is what he's saying. The world is full of violence, full of corruption. It says, so God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all. All people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. You know we are the ones who make the earth violent. If there's violence in your family, find out who is causing the violence. Where is the enemy entering through? If it's in your village, if it's in your school, ask yourself. Because God is seeing it. He knows your product. He knows you. He, is he calling you a righteous man? How is your account with God? How is your account when you are in school? How is your account for this time you're going to be at home all this long? How shall your account be? That is a question you need to ask yourself. Because the account will cause God to do something. People are saying this COVID could be as a result of disobedience. We have disobeyed God. And it could be true. It could also be prophetic, fulfilling scriptures. The Bible says in the last day, we will have pandemics. Situations will not be good. And that's why James say, don't say tomorrow I'll do this and this, I'll go to form one, I'll do this. No, no, no. Don't just focus on your external beauty and many other things. No. Look at your inner man. How is it? You need to be found a man whom God will acknowledge and say, this little young girl, she loves me. She values me. Her account is clean. Her account is, is acceptable. This family, this family, the account is good. This church, LCC, the account is good. This school, this nation of Kenya, the account is good. If us as parents, we have messed up the account, what are you doing as siblings as you rise up? If I'm your mother and I've been so corrupt in my place of work, I don't behave well. Are you seeing what is happening? Can you be used of God? Like Noah was told, I'm going to destroy. But because I'm going to destroy, you have been found righteous. I will not read everything. And Noah was told, I wanted to prepare an ark. What is the ark in this case? The ark is my salvation. It's my spiritual relationship with God. And he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. So when I seek God first, then in that God, my education is will be taken care of. My social life is taken care of. My economical life is taken care of. My environment is taken care of. No was told, build an ark. The ark is synonymous to our spiritual relationship with God. And I, this is salvation. And I want to tell us, salvation has a beginning. Remember when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and, as your Lord and Savior, you began building your ark. You began building the house in which Jesus Christ can indwell when you are in a crisis. And I want to put it to our children as at now. With the surrounding condition and circumstances, there are measurements of your salvation. There are breadth of your salvation. There is a depth of your salvation. There are rooms in your salvation. God is particular on how we shall be living, even in this COVID-19. He's very particular. He knows we, days are wicked. Seasons are not the best. But yet there was a man, Noah, at a particular time similar to this one of ours. And the Bible records he was found right. And the Lord gave him instructions 
on how to bring deliverance. I want to appeal to you, our children, that work out your salvation with fear and trembling. As it is in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 12, the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. God would want us to follow his instructions as pertains to our salvation. The way he told um, Noah, he told him, make this ark. This ark, let it be made up of cypress wood. Cypress wood is light, it can float. What have you feeding yourself with your spirit man with that you can become so heavy, but you can't pray when we are saying pray and fast? What have you filled your inner man with that you can't be used of God in these last days to bring a difference in the situation which we can refer to as a crisis? I want, don't want to rush over this issue of Noah because Noah was told, you know, our God is so loving, he's so caring, he's so gracious, he's so merciful. He knows our rising up and our li going, uh, lying down, our going out and our coming in. He knows our needs, spiritual needs, physical needs, all kinds of needs we have. He told Noah, prepare this ark. He told him, I'll use this ark to save your family members. Your children plus their wives and their grandchildren, his grandchildren. He was told, prepare this ark. I would want to save humanity, your, your, your uh, animals, the things I've created. I want to have a remnant of it. In these wicked days, God is looking for a remnant. And this remnant will not come outside, but from the body of Jesus Christ. This remnant will come out of the way you take in instructions, responding to divine instructions. This was a divine instruction to know, prepare an ark, make an ark, make it of Cyprus, make four rooms in it. This inner room, this outer room, this middle room, put a door, make the roof for the ceiling not to be so close, leave a lining for air to come in. How is your life? The air represents the Holy Ghost. How are you building your life? Are there rooms for growth? Do you see the potential of God in your life? That you're not only to study, that you're not only to eat and be there, but you're supposed to be a person God can use to bring a solution to the needs we have as at now. Maybe healing needs, maybe educational needs, whatever need it could be. Praise be to Jesus. Allow me to use um, an example even as my time is running out, I'll just summarize wherever I'll have stopped. I'll find some more time and continue on, on this message. Uh, recently, in this situation of COVID-19, you might be thinking you as teenagers, you, are, you maybe are the ones who are disturbed. Though to a, a, an extent, I look at you and I see like, you look so settled, some of you are not worried. Because I think someone has told you this is a disease for, for old people and people having issues and you don't realize, even if it's for such like people, there is a role you can play to help these people be fine. So uh, the Lord showed me in a dream a situation where I was in a state of in my inner room, a place I used for resting, the upper part was dismantled. And I was struck and it was dismantled because of some kind of struggle I was in. And now I was looking for a way of having it refixed. And in the dream, I could see one of my children coming in to help, it, help me fix it. Really coming in strongly to help me fix it. I didn't know what it was, but I prayed and told God, God, whatever you'd want to do through these children, and not only these ones, but all our children, give them the grace to do it. So this dream caused me to realize there is a role you have to play in your family. In whatever situation and whatever state, in this nation, in your school, never exonerate yourself from the prevailing circumstances. And never take a stand whereby you feel like there is no need for me to participate. It's now over with me. Or let me just be careless and live my life the way you want to live. Be like Noah, take in divine instructions to respond to a crisis. If for sure the Lord would want to wipe away humanity because of our arrogance. Or in our arrogance of trying to show that we are better than God, God has decided to use the very thing we are trying to work on to destroy us. What will you do? The only thing we can do is to ask God for mercies and forgiveness. If my prayer can't go through as a mother, as a father, why can't you rise as a teenager and take your position? Heed to the voice of God that is saying, like Noah, build your ark. Build your salvation. Use this material. 
put in many rooms. See the potential God has given you. Appreciate those potentials. Work on them. Yield to corrections. Allow the propulsion by the Spirit of God. Allow the awakening and quickening by the Spirit of God. Why was the ark supposed to have a door? There is a door to our hearts. The door should close. You should close anything that is not of good to come into your life in this season. Don't allow complaints. Don't allow pornography. Don't allow murmuring. Don't allow rudeness and stubbornness. Don't allow prayerlessness. Build your salvation with fear and trembling. Take your God-given position. Seek to know in the body of Jesus Christ, which is also an ark. Are you a musician? Are you a teacher? Are you an evangelist? Are you a prophet? Samuel began it at a tender age. David won victory at a tender age. Crisis will be there with us. Finishing, I want you to consider Paul, called of God, and finds himself on water in a crisis. What was his divine response? You will find out by yourself. When you look at your family, what are some of the crises you're passing through? When you look at your school, how is your response? Is it a divine one, godly one, or it's a demonic one? The last person I want to mention, I've not taken time to go into the messages on the various parts of the ark, what it comprises. I'll trust God for another time for this. But I just want to tell you that your salvation has boundaries. It has boundaries in height. It has boundaries in width. It has boundaries in breadth. So you will not just live carelessly and push things on us. The Lord will not be found in it. Because he says he knows his, but we are his, my sons and daughters. We are his. That's why he calls us his. Hallelujah. And you must rejoice and be glad. And I pray that you be and having an account like Noah, where the Bible says the Lord was pleased with him. His account was clean and that God may give you instructions. And the question is, the instructions sometimes may take long and be so involving with a lot of challenges and discouragement. Maybe it's education and God is saying, I want you to build the ark of academics that through this I can transform your fam economic family, economic status in your family. And there are challenges in that school. Are you going to go back? Are you going to sit down and things go wrong? No, don't do that. I went through it from a very poor background. A house which is, you know, built using grass and on the sides there are banana fibers, taking care of it at the university. But I held on to it. And now the Lord has brought me this far. He's able. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we are able to do, more than we think or imagine. I'm speaking to our teens, but I'm also speaking to, um, to myself and to us. Build our ark. Let us build them. Let us look into our salvation and do everything the Lord is asking us to do. He said, put their food. Read the word of God. Be rich in the word of God. Take the example of a man of God, Stephen. As I conclude, in the book of Acts, chapter 6, Stephen, the Bible says, was a man full of the Holy Ghost, full of the word of God. In fact, when there was a, a plan to destroy him, which is also happening to us, the Bible says, the devil is roaring around like a lion, looking for whom to devour. That is in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. And don't you think because you are still young, the devil will not devour you? The enemy of COVID-19 will not spare you. But because I'm young, and because, no, 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 don't give the enemy a chance. It wasn't then who told it can't be now. Persecution arose that time when, you know, people of God were sitting together and feeding and relaxing and feeling nice. And they wanted to build a cocoon of their own. And the advancement of the work of God could not continue. And the Lord allowed persecution to come in. Persecution that entailed even dying of some. Why do you think even right now men of God have died? How will you respond if you hear tomorrow, Pastor Fanny's is not alive, dead? Are you going to complain and mum? We need to know what is happening right now. Because God knew what was happening at the time of Noah. God knew what was happening with Israelites. 
That's why he sent Moses to deliver them. And he knew the journey, that it could not be easy, but he never left them. God is a holy God. He can be tied with our filthiness and our fake salvation. When, in school, when you were in school, how were you responding? How was your life? Which kind of a girl were you? Which kind of a student were you? Search your heart as I finalize. Search your heart. I can see I have one minute remaining. But ask yourself, how have I been? When the Lord looks at my account, am I falling in the category of Noah or the Israelites who are complaining and murmuring? Or I'm like Moses who is connected to God. And if it's like I'm Noah, what is God speaking to me to do as at now? For this time, I'm going to be at home with my parents. Am I going to be this a nuisance student, a nuisance child who cannot take in corrections, who is not building her salvation? You don't read the word. You don't pray. You don't sing. You just want to eat and be there or watch bad movies. What are you doing? The Lord sees. He's seeing. He's seeing. And even if you are doing things fine, like in the days of Stephen. Stephen, they felt like, oh, we can eat now. He was serving tables. And the Bible says he was full of the anointing of God. He was full of the Holy Ghost. These are days we must be full of the Holy Ghost. Because the enemy is roaring, looking for home to Dibwa. And therefore, they decided we want to destroy Stephen. That is the last one I want us to look at. You will ask me, why are you asking, Pastor, to relate ourselves to this? We are in days where we are seeing men of God dying. They may not die because God has allowed it. Maybe the enemy has just hit them. Even our children. Many bad things are happening. They are happening. The enemy is destroying. He's devouring. How are we supposed to respond? Build your ark. Secondly, if it were that I'm to go, what is my response? When Stephen was accused, brethren, praise God. My little ones. This could be threatening, but it's true. When Stephen was accused, he did not just accept it lying down. He put these people in the picture to know that he knew what they were talking about. He knew God and he was for God. And whatever they were saying was lies. People may accuse you. Parents may not understand you. But continue doing what is right. Feed yourself with the word of God. Be rich in the word of God. Say, I shall be rich in the word of God. Say, in this season, I shall be rich in the word of God. Confess, in this season, I shall be full of the word of God. Noah was told, put a lot of food in the ark. The food is the word of God. Fathers, mothers, let us be full of the word of God. And the Bible says, Stephen was full of the anointing of God. Oh, hallelujah, I want to be this mother. I want to be this woman. I want to be this teenager who is full of the Holy Ghost. That when the enemy is throwing his arrows on me, I can deflect them by the shield of faith. But if the Lord allows me to slip, I will have my eyes focused on Christ Jesus. The Bible says, Stephen, when they were throwing stones at him, he saw the heavens open. Let us remain connected with our God in this season. Whether you have money, no money. You've lost a job, no job. Parents have died. Parents are not there. Does not matter. Does not matter what the Lord may allow us to go through in this season. What matters is our relationship with him. The Bible says Stephen did not focus on the insults. In fact, when he, in, in fact, he saw the heavens open before they began stoning him. And he confessed it. Never stop confessing Christ. Never stop preaching the word. Never because your mother died. I know there are some of you who lost your parents. I know there are children who are mourning their mother and the father is not there. I know jobs are not there. The Lord hears you. The Lord is walking through it with you. You are not alone. May the grace of God abound that you can be like Stephen. The Bible says, Stephen saw the Lord standing. And he did not part the sea like it was in the case of Moses. He did not do that. But he allowed Stephen to be stoned to death. And the Bible says Stephen knelt down. He did not complain. He knelt down. And Stephen knelt down, knelt down. And said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. As young people, let us ask God to forgive us. Let us forgive those who may have hurt us when we were in school. Mm -hmm. Let us forgive our parents when they may have hurt us. 
Oh, Lord Jesus, help us in this season. Let us not be bitter with God. Stephen did not accept to be bitter. Churches, Will you question God? Mm. Will you question God? And Peter knelt down. And Peter worshipped. I pray that our children as teens, you will learn to worship God in your difficulties. You learn to worship God in your lack. You learn to worship God in your losses. You learn to worship God in you, you, your delays, the Bible says. And Stephen worshipped and said, do not hold this against them, O God, for they know not what they are doing. And he rested in God. And the Bible says, let us find rest in Christ Jesus. And my prayer would be today that God you would help our children as teens in this stage of very fast exponential growth. In this stage of wondering why were we born in this season? And why are all this happening to us? Oh yes, I pray. You'll cause them to look to you like Stephen look to you. Even when their fathers and mothers are not there, Lord. Even when education delays, oh God. Thank you because for sure like you received Stephen. Like you made a way for Moses. Like you gave instructions to Noah. I pray that God will help us to learn, to respond, respond to divine instructions in the spirit, you will help us to confess positively and you'll help us to say for us to live is Christ and to die is gain. To say though the vision tarries, it will surely come to pass. Hallelujah. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you because you've heard our prayers. As I began, I said, we are committing you to God. And therefore, on behalf of your teachers and the Bishop Kefomai and Reverend Ross, Reverend Dan, Pastor Joanne, Pastor Bada, Pastor Martin, Pastor Pauline, Pastor Maingi, Judy, all of us, the church elders, Lord, we commit our children to you. And not only ours, but for the nation of Kenya and the world as a whole. Father, we commit them to you. You are the ark I have in my life. I commit them to you. I pray that as Noah came with his children to the ark, we are coming to you with our children. We bring them under the covering of our salvation that they shall be protected, preserved, and sustained in you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Say amen with me wherever you are. Amen, amen. God bless you. God keep you. God sustain him. God make his face shine upon you. See you again. As I said in the beginning, this is Liberty Christian Center under RGC Ministries. We are located off the Coney Road in Plainsview. This is a church where everybody is somebody and Jesus Christ is Lord. We are part of the body of Jesus Christ. So if you are in our surrounding, don't stay away. Just like a hand can not run away from a leg. Just come and get your place here and you'll be blessed. In this season, we are growing. We are more than conquerors because Christ overcame them for us. I hope you will respond to crisis in a divine manner, not as a weakling, but as a victor. God bless you. See you. Bye.
on evidence. You don't have to come up here. I just want y'all to sing. On the Sounds of Revival CD, if you got it, there's inside, there's a picture of an empty wheelchair. That was hers. She was bedridden for over 100 days in a nursing home for over 70 days. Her muscles had atrophied. She had a cervical spine issue where her C2 and her C4 spine collapsed on each other and she had pain all throughout her body. She had rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. But today, there's no wheelchair. She was healed. What the devil wanted to do was roll seven caskets. 